I think it's an honor to be able to be with people during that last stage of their journey. People think of hospice as we're helping people die, but I like to say we're helping them live until they die. We help people prepare for the next step, so I really describe hospice as help. I think that's what I love about the job most, is that when you arrive into someone's life that is coming to its close, there are no more masks. Is it's not about dying. This isn't about death. This is about the life that someone has left. For me and for the whole family, they've kind of brought us together, kind of bonded us. You just felt comfortable with them. You knew they were there to help you. Well, good morning. It's 9.30 on Thursday morning, and I'm off for a hospice trip to go and visit one of my clients named Hannah. We're going to go see Dorothy Peterson, who has lymphoma. She's 90, 91, something like that. I'm on my way to visit Jean Funk. She's um, just a real joyful, fun person who talks very openly. It's me, Jean. It's Ruth. Hi, Ruth. How you doing? You look great. Oh Love goodness. you. Look what I bought for you. We're yeah, going to have some mushrooms here pretty quick. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> I'm Derek Pollock Hanny. I'm a hospice volunteer. I've uh, known Hannah for almost two years now. The first time that I met her uh, was immediately assaulted by 16 cats. <laughs> Hannah is seeking friendship and joy in her life. And she does that through her church and through the hospice volunteers that go and help. When a person is sharing the last few moments that they have on this earth with you, that's quality time. You know, you, you don't get to take it back and try it over again, and what you see is what you get. Well, Hospice of Spokane is about serving terminally ill patients and families in our community. Where, where is she, do you think, in her whole disease process? You know, the comprehensive care that people need at the end of life is physical, it's uh, psychosocial, emotional, and spiritual. Her husband, Leo, is primary caregiver. That care conference is that group of people who come at the same time each week, every week, and talk about the patients that they're caring for. We don't look at just the physical, you know, that we look at all the other aspects of somebody's life and support the whole person and the whole system. It's truly like being born. I mean, there, there's a subspecialty of medicine that's there when you're born, and, you, and everyone anticipates they have a right to that care. Well, there's the same subspecialty of medicine that's there as you end your life, and everyone has a right to that. Jane and I have been working together as partners for a little over seven years. I'm telling the story. We hate space. We'd like a little, a little time away from each other. <laughs> but overall, it's a successful marriage, I do believe. That blue house is our destination. Yeah, it's slippery, slippery, <laughs> slippery. Hospice care, from a nursing standpoint, is about symptom management. And when you took the morphine, did it ease the breathing? Oh, yeah. I mean, it encompasses a lot of things, but we go in and take care of people's pain. They know that it's not all doom and gloom when the hospice team comes. It doesn't have to be. First, I like to just talk to them. So much comes out in conversation. That's a good thing, and we'll just keep Take their blood pressure and listen to their heart and listen to their lungs. It really is about comfort care. Comfort care takes a look at the whole package, and it's not only the body, but it's the spirit, it's the mind, it's um, the relationships, it's, it's everything. Now this, group, this is my son. So with that, Jane is taking care of one set of needs and I'm looking at something else and, and eventually they're going to intertwine and they'll work together well. I have a different focus as a social worker. You're the daughter. You've got to be the daughter. And we can be the professionals. B 
because of what we do and our expertise and experience, we can help educate them. I think a huge chunk of what we both do is education. We see a tremendous amount of courage in people daily, um, and that courage looks different in every situation. I would say some of the misconceptions about hospice care, that it's only for people with cancer, and that it's only for elderly people. Hospice of Spokane cares for patients of all ages, from newborn babies all the way through folks in their 90s and 100s. It's like some big arms engulf you, and you feel very safe and comfortable and relaxed. That's the most common feedback that we get on a family satisfaction survey is we wish we would have known about you guys sooner. You know, I think the biggest misconception about hospice is that you can't have hope, that, that hospice and hope are incompatible. And I think in a lot of ways, hospice is all about hope. It's about maximizing quality of life for that time that someone has left. It's like, how do you want to spend this very important time? And with whom? And let's help make that happen. And we have some incredible stories. My name is Susie Michalik, and I'm a volunteer with hospice with my friend Ranger. We're going to go see Miss Dorothy. Miss Dorothy really Ms. looks Dorothy? forward to these visits. As soon as she saw him, she reached out with both arms and she said, oh, there's my dog. Ah, oh, did you come to see me? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He's so bad. He's completely decked out. She has her own way of having a conversation with him. I am a volunteer chaplain with Hospice of Spokane. Usually people have asked to see us and the social workers are the ones who make those referrals. Good to see you. Yes. Good to see you. We really want to be chaplains who can minister to anyone. There's a, there's a wide gamut of um, faith and beliefs that people present to us. We have people who have never had anything to do with the spiritual, have just downplayed that their whole life. We don't go in as chaplains and are trying to change them or try and convert them or try to move them into our way of thinking. That's absolutely not what we're doing. But we do want to find out where they are on that path. Oftentimes people equate the word chaplain with religion. And not all people want that. So part of our role is to teach that we are available for whatever the need might be. Amen. Amen. Yes. I want to welcome everybody to the group today. I'm Tanya Charlton, and I'm a bereavement counselor for Hospice Spokane. Hospice services don't end with the death of the client. They need us even more at that point, the families, than they did before. I'm Bob. I lost my wife, Dorothy. My name is Ernie, and I lost a good friend. In our society, we, we tend to want to make somebody not grieve or make them feel better. And this allows them a place where they can come and just be open and be themselves. My friend suffered for so many years. Grief is a real hard thing for people to talk about, and so what I try to do with the groups is to make it a comfortable place for them to be able to express their feelings. Anyone who has lost someone is welcome to come and attend a group because grief is a universal human state. To be present to another person is to listen, to not have to fix anything, to not even have to say anything but just to be with and to listen to that person's life story and to hold it. And sometimes that story has been told a million times by the person. When we come along, we can be the new ears that listen and validate and help that person realize how valuable they've been. Hospice is just there for me when I make that phone call of, I'm exasperated, I don't know what to do, who to turn to. It's a tough journey. And just knowing that there are people who have been on that journey can go with us and help us through the process. All I can say is they're just wonderful people. They've got a big heart.
The hospice house is really a, a dream that Hospice of Spokane has had for a long time. And it's a place where dying patients and their families can be cared for in a loving, home-like environment, surrounded by caregivers who are expertly trained in caring for their needs. My name is Cheryl, and I'm one of the cooks here at Hospice House. Well, today I'm making a, a, a cake with lemon pudding and chocolate frosting. We had a client yesterday, and he says, do you have any more of that good cake from yesterday? And I said, no, it's all gone. And I said, I'll make you one tomorrow. We've received such positive, positive feedback from families of clients who have passed here. I'm Emily, and I like the hospice house because when my mom was here, I really felt welcome with my mom. I think my mom liked being here a lot because every time I would come and visit her, she would always be happy and she would always want to have a good time just spending the last days. So she would love to, you know, just have me around and stuff like that. It's like a large family that takes care of you. They just kind of engulf you from the hot soup to the baked goods every day to it was wonderful. I don't have any, any complaints, nothing negative to ever say about hospice. So the journey is um, the sacred ground that we walk with people to be part of their journey and, and then they become part of ours. <laughs>